Hi, in this video, we will work through how to use AutoML capability within Power BI service. AutoML is a capability that's available to Power BI service uh, with a premium capacity. With AutoML capability, you will be able to build machine learning models without having to code or having to necessarily know which algorithms to choose from. So Microsoft has made this available in Power BI with the goal to democratize AI and to benefit more users without the capability to write code to build machine learning models. So first you want to do new and then data flow. And then click on add new entities. It will um, go to a list of um, formats that you can use um, to import the data. So different data sources are available in here. We want to choose CSV since that's what the example data is um, made of. And we have an open data set, so we don't need uh, any credentials to access that. So once we have that, we will be able to see the data set. So here we have a um, data set of online sessions. Some of them has resulted in a purchase and we are interested in the different attributes. And um, we will use this to train the machine learning model and tell us which ones are resulting in the um, online purchase. So once you click on transform data, it will go to the Power Query Editor, and you'll be able to do all sorts of transformation here. In here, we are particularly interested in changing the um, field revenue into a Boolean, since that is what we are predicting to say whether a customer's um, online session has resulted in revenue for us. So we can save and close. At this point, uh, Power BI will ask us to um, have a name for our data flow. So we can choose a name here, and we will choose Online Shopper Intent and Demo, and then Save. So once you save the data flow, you will be able to run the machine learning um, model um, on your entity. So you can see that um, in that entity that we just set up, under actions, there's this little brain icon, and this is what we will choose to um, add a machine learning model. So the outcome field we're interested in is um, actually revenue, um, because we're interested in a revenue has generated or not based on the online session. And then Power BI will do a analytics on that field and recommend the best type of model to use. In this case, because the result we're looking for is binary, so it's recommending a binary prediction model. We're interested in the customers that actually bought, and then we can relabel the true and false into purchase and no purchase in this instance. And then we can click uh, next. What Power BI will do next is to do a quick scan of your data and then recommend the fields that um, you can include in your model for all the fields that it doesn't recommend to include in your model, it will give a reason in the brackets next to the field. And you have full liberty here to include or exclude any fields that you want. In this case, we will just keep it as it is and click Next. Then um, you will need to give your model a name and set a maximum training time for your model. So 
maximum training time is important because if you leave it for too short, then Power BI might not have enough time to run through all the algorithms for you, might not be able to find the best possible model. Um, so you want to leave that a reasonable amount of time to run and potentially find a better model. So in this case, we want to leave it a bit longer than uh, 120 minutes. We'll leave it 180 and then we can click save and train. Once you start training, depend on your data set, it could train for anywhere between a couple minutes to the maximum amount of time you have set. In the interest of time, we have pre-trained a uh, same model. And if we go to machine learning models um, in the data flow, you will see the last time it's trained in terms of timestamp and the status. If we click into the training report, we'll be able to see the model performance. And th this is telling you how um, your model is likely to perform. So once this renders, you will see the uh, model performance page. Um, you'll be able to click on top predictors. And that is telling you the top influencers amongst your attributes for your outcome field. So and that is ranked by the importance of that um, of those attributes. And then your model will describe the performance of the model in terms of two positives, false positives, two negatives, and false negatives. Two positives and two negatives are correctly predicted outcome for the two classes in the outcome data. The false positives are the records that were predicted to have target outcome but actually didn't. And the false negatives are the records that had the target outcome but were predicted to not have it. So measures like precision and record describe the effect of probability um, threshold on the predicted outcome. You can use the probability threshold slicer to select um, a threshold that achieve a balanced compromise between the position and the record. So as you are changing the um, slicer, you can see the um, position and the record will dynamically render based on the probability threshold. The report will also include a cost-benefit analysis too to help identify the subset of population that should be targeted to yield the highest profit. You can use this tool to pick your probability threshold based on the maximum point in the graph to maximize your profit. You can also use the graph to compute the profit or the cost for your choice of probability threshold as well. So the accuracy report will give you two metrics. One is the cumulative gain charts and the ROC curve um, is the other. And these are the statistical measures of the model performance. And then if you click over to the training details, it will tell you which one was the final model that was used. It will describe the different iterations that were run and then how the features were extracted from your input as well as the hyperparameters that was used in your final model. So once you're happy with your model, you can click the applied model in the model performance page and by selecting the entity to apply it to. Once you apply it to a entity, it will in, uh, create a couple of 
uh, additional entities. One is called enriched uh, your model name and the other is called enriched your model name explanations. It will add additional fields in um, those entities to give you insights on the model results and the explanations. Um, as well, we have connected uh, Power BI Desktop to one of the enriched data sets to show you what additional fields are available. So let's hop over to Power BI Desktop. You can see that we have the um, additional fields available, outcome explanation index and prediction explanation and the prediction score. And we use the prediction outcome to build a visualization to show you how it looks like.